Hey, Chemstars, this is Mrs. Vandewally bringing you another Chemstar video where you are the star, right? So we are in Chapter 2 still, and we are talking about measurements and calculations. So this section specifically is about measurements. This section we're going to uh, explain about precision and accuracy and why it's important. We're also going to learn how to read a ruler in a graduate cylinder uh, correctly uh, because that will increase the precision if you know how to read it correctly. Uh, and, and really our precision and our accuracy is, is dependent on what equipment we are using. So that's what this section is all about. So it says recognize that instruments have a limit to their precision and relate that data uh, recorded to the quality of the measurement. So we're going to be talking about precision and accuracy and some vocabulary. We're going to talk about um, accuracy precision. We're going to talk about error and how to calculate it. Uh, you, we're going to talk about like your scales and rulers and graduate cylinders and thermometers and whatnot because there's a difference between, let's say, the precision of a graduate cylinder and the precision of a beaker. And you're going to have some lab activities where you're actually using this, okay, and we'll apply what this section's all about. So if you can, get out your calculator. We are going to need it a little bit uh, today. And so if you need to pause this and grab your calculator, then why don't you go ahead and do that and come right back. Okay, so let's talk about accuracy. What is accuracy? It is the value of how close a measurement is to the actual or true value. So is your, val is your data close to the real data or is it pretty far away? So precision is how close the measurements are to each other. Um, this is important because let's say you're, you're massing something on a scale. And let's say there's some crud left over from the person before you. And you put your new stuff on the scale. Well, guess what? The scale's going to read heavier every time. But I bet your values are going to be precise. Okay, so that's why we need to talk about this kind of um, measurement, all right? So I'm going to use some bullseye targets here uh, to show the differences, all right? So let's say I'm a beginner uh, with my bow and arrow, and I shoot my three arrows like this. One of them didn't even make it on the, the target there. Oh, my goodness. How, how, how would you describe my abilities? Well, first of all, am I accurate? Are, are the, is the average here in the middle of the bullseye? Uh, no. And are my three arrows close together? Uh, no. So I am not accurate or am I precise, okay? Well, all right, now I'm going to try a, three more arrows. And I end up about right here. So maybe I figured out my technique, but I'm actually sighting the bullseye with my bad eye or something, all right? I'm looking at the wrong place to aim my, my bow and arrow. Uh, but they all end up at the same place, all right? So how would you describe this? Well, if they're all together, they are precise, but it's not near the middle, so it's not accurate. All right, so what about this uh, scenario here? So I shoot three arrows. I'm looking at the bullseye, but my technique isn't so great, and I kind of missed it. But guess what? If I took the average of those three arrows, where would they be? Oh, they would be in the middle, wouldn't they? So you are accurate because the average is in the bullseye, but you're not precise. Those are, are pretty far away. And then over here, you could probably guess what's going to happen here. I have three arrows. They all hit the bullseye. I'm kind of like a Robin Hood at this point, aren't I? And um, they're all together. So how would you describe this? They are both, I'll just throw there, both accurate and precise, okay? And this is really what our goal is. As long as our equipment is working well and, and you are very careful, you should be both accurate and precise, all right? But things like maybe this do happen, all right? Um, and we can explain why something like this might happen to you. So when you are determining error, you are actually seeing how accurate you are, how close you are to the actual value. So it is the difference between the measured value and the actual value. So what does the difference mean? It means you're going to be subtracting. So your error is the experimental value, what you actually measured minus the true value. All right. Now, it can be positive or negative. So if your experimental value is greater than the actual value, then it's going to be a positive number. What if you measure too small, then it's going to be a negative. So it says find the error of a desk, or if a desk is 23 centimeters, and you measured it as 21. So which is which? Which is the value that you measured it? It's 21. What about the desk? Its actual value is 23. So you're going to subtract, and you get negative 2 centimeters. I want to show you something real quick because we're going to be you know, looking at this a little bit more down the road. When you're subtracting units, you just keep it in centimeters. They don't cancel out, so your, your error still has a unit with you, okay? 
And then you have something called percent error. And that is, I think, more useful for looking at your data. Um, it's the absolute value of your error that you just solved up here uh, divided by the actual value and then multiply it by 100%. So what is an absolute value? It is always the positive value. So if it's a negative two centimeters, it'll be a positive in your math down here. If it started off as positive, then it's going to remain positive. So what's going to happen is that it's only going to be a positive number. Okay. So it says find the percent error from the problem above. So what is my numerator? It's what I found here when you subtract it. That is your error. Divide it by the actual value, which is 23, times 100%. Now I want to show you something real quick. Look what happens to my units. If the, you are dividing a unit by a unit, then they cancel out. So notice there is no centimeters in my value here because they canceled out. So 2 divided by 23 is this number right here, times 100% is 8.695%. Yeah, and I would say, eh, that's not too bad. It's under 10%. So you're, you're doing all right. Um, you know, maybe next time you can measure a little bit more closely and then you'll be, uh, you'll be better off, okay? But whoops, that's um, what's happening here. And let's try the next page. All right, so here's another uh, example. So you are supposed to measure a piece of aluminum, and you're going to be doing that in a future lab. So it says find the error and the percent error if a student measures the length of the piece of aluminum to be 15.0 centimeters, and Mrs. Van de Wally, that's me, uses this as an actual value because, you know, I'm always right, uh, measures his piece as 15.6, all right? So what's the first thing? I need to find the error. So what's error again? You take what? Your value minus the actual value, and you get a number. So what is percent error? You're going to take the absolute value of the 0.6 uh, centimeters. So notice this is negative here. This is positive here. Divide it by the actual value, the one that Mrs. Vandley came up with, and then you're going to multiply it by 100%. Uh, percent. Again, what do you notice? These guys are going to cancel out. So go ahead and use your calculator. And what do you notice uh, when you do this? You get like 0 .00384. Uh, so multiply that by 100, you get 3.84. Okay. Um, and then the next one, why don't you do letter B all by yourself and see how you do? Okay. So pause this, do the math, and come back. I misspoke up ahead. When you just um, divide it to get 0 0.0384 and multiply by 100, get 3.84%. So I, I misspoke. I'm sorry about that. But I caught my, my, my error, didn't I? Um, speaking of error. So what did you find with letter B? So once again, you are going to subtract. And notice this time, um, oops, phew, I almost got that. So this is, again, your value is 50. And then Mrs. Vandeloy came up with 50.27 to get negative 0.27 mils. And now you're going to find your percent error. So you can take the absolute value of negative 0.27, divide it by 50.27. Again, what do I want you to notice? That the milliliters cancel out. And then what are you left with? You're left with, multiply by 100%, then 0.537%. Uh, okay. So I've already alluded to this a little bit. Um, what are some places where you will you know, have an issue? Maybe your measuring device is defective. Uh, skill of a person, meaning maybe if you're going to read a graduate cylinder, some of you tall people don't bend down to eye level and you're reading your graduate cylinder at an angle, you're going to, you're going to miss your values. Uh, what if I asked you like, to find the measurement of my desk, but the desk has curved edges, all right? Where do you measure on a curved edge, okay? Uh, that's your rounded off corners. Again, the angle of the reading, uh, maybe you're not at eye level. And for some folks, like using a thermometer, if you leave your thermometer so it's touching the bottom of the beaker and it's on a hot plate, the glass gets uh, hotter quicker than the water does. So you might be measuring the temperature of the beaker, not the, measure, or the temperature of the water that's in the beaker. So uh, never just leave your, your thermometer at the bottom because you're going to get an error in your measurement. Now let's talk about reading the rulers and graduate cylinders. This is kind of along the lines of the measuring device, okay? How can you correctly uh, read a ruler and correctly read a thermometer, okay? Or a, you know, whatever, okay? So it says not all measuring devices are the same. Therefore, you need to pay attention to the scales given. 
please follow the guidelines. And I mean it. Very, very important. Um, this has in the past caused difficulties because I don't think people are paying attention to what they're doing. All right, it's not that hard, okay? So it says, note the scale given. You should have at least two numbers showing. So let's look at this right here. Yes, I have two digits. I actually have three digits showing. I'm doing well. It says, note the number of visions between each number. There will be typically 10 divisions. And then you'll be guessing one more place value of each division. So watch. What, what place value are these? These are in the ones. So the, uh, the divisions are the tenths, and you're going to guess to the hundredths. So just keep this in mind. Whatever the scale is right here, you're going to be going two decimal places after that, always, and when you read it, okay? So what does this say here? In this metric ruler, the scale is given one, two, three. It represents one centimeter in the ones. There are 10 divisions. Therefore, each of these little lines in between is worth a tenth, and you're going to guess the nearest hundredth, okay? So your answer would be like something, point, something, something. Okay, so let's check this out here. Okay, so again, I'm using the exact same ruler. This is the ones, all right, twos, threes. So these are in the ones digit. The lines are in the tenths. You're going to guess to the hundredth. So how am I going to do this? Well, I know it's less than one. So my first digit's a zero point, all right, because it's between zero and one. And then I'm looking at the divisions. Well, you know these are the point five, so it's point six, point seven, point eight, point nine. It looks like it's between 0.7, I'm sorry, 0 .8, uh, 7 and 0 0.8. Oh, it's not. Okay, I realize that my smart board has a problem, but your notes should be fine. So let's try this again. Um, these are your ones. These are your tenths. So this is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So it's between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. So you can guess to the next decimal place. You can guess, uh, maybe smack them in the 0.85, or maybe say, no, it's a little bit close to 0.9, I'll make it 0.87. So you're gonna get 0 0.85 is a good answer. 0 0.87 is a good answer, all right? I'm not gonna take off if I think, now it's 0 0.82 or something. No, as long as you read it at least to the correct digit, you're gonna be a lot closer than if you just said 0.8, okay? So once again, what unit are these? These are the ones, your answer is in the hundreds. So you can go two digits behind what you are given, okay? Let's try another one. All right, so here I have a ruler. You know, it's the same one as before. Let's try it again. So this is the ones digit, so you can go two more. So each one of these lines is the tenths digit, and you can guess to the nearest hundreds. Oops, let's kind of move this over a little bit, like right in here. That's your hundredth spot. So letter A. It's between what and what? It's between zero and one. So your first digit is zero. And then what? It's between the eight and the nine. So I'm going to say 0 0.85. Okay. What about letter B? It's between what? One and two. So my first digit is going to be a one. It looks like it's on the five mark. And if it's on the five mark, you got to go 1.50. Why? Because the ruler, every single reading should be to the nearest hundredth. So this tells me it is straight on the 0.5. Well, let's look at letter C. All right, it's between two and three, or is it on the two? All right, if it's on the two, it's 2.00. Now you could say, Mrs. Vandewey, I think it's just to the right of the two mark. Okay, so if you want to write 2.01, you're allowed to do that, okay? That's a perfectly good answer. So then what about the next one? It's between three and four, all right? So what is this line right here? That's the point 0.1. So really it's between 3.0 and 3.1. So what's between 3.0 and 3.1 is 3.05, okay? And all these units are gonna be in the centimeters. All right, graduate cylinders. Well, let's talk about graduate cylinders. They are read in the exact same way. Okie dokie. So what is the scale on this graduate cylinder? These are the tens. So go to beyond that. So tens, ones, tenths. You're going to read this to nearest tenth. All right. So here we have the, oops, the, well, these are the ones. Here we have the tens, the ones, and then in between are the tenths. So how am I going to do this? This is 30. This is 31, 32, 33. So it's between 32 and 33. 
So what's between 32 and 33 is 32.5, all right? So notice, I only read to the nearest tenths here because I start off in the tens. So tens, ones, tenths. I read the nearest tenths. So what about the next one? Okay, note the scale, all right. What are the numbers that I was given? I'm given the ones. So what comes after the ones is the tenths, and what comes after the tenths is in between the hundredths. So how are you gonna read this? So, well, it's between 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5. So it's between 8.4 and 8.5. I'm gonna go 8.45. So if you're 8.44, hey, you're fine, okay? It's just a matter of you know getting to the right decimal point okay well let's try the next one all right so i'm given 11 and 12. well they're in the tenths the one the one but your your scale's a little bit different it's 11 and 12. so the 11 and the 12 are in the um one spot so what is two digits beyond the ones it's gonna be the hundreds again so each and every one of these are going to be read to the nearest hundreds so why don't you pause this write down what you got and then come back. All right, how'd you do? Well, I'd say it's between 11.0, 11.1, 11.2. So it's between 11.1, 11.2. I think it's close to 11.1, so I wrote this. What if you wrote 11.13? You're great, all right? Letter B, it's between 11.4 and 11.5. To my look, it's just below the 12, or let's see, 11.5. So I wrote 11.49. If you wrote 11.50, oh, you're fine. If you wrote 11.5, you're wrong, okay? So about the next one, this is 11.5, 11.6, 11.7. It's between 11.7 and 11.8, so I wrote 11.75. And about letter D, all right, it looks like it's on the 12. So that means it's exactly 12.00 milliliters. If it's on the 12, you read it two digits back, okay, to the nearest hundreds. Um, that is all for this section. Um, you know, we're gonna be practicing this in class. Uh, we're going to have an objective check over this as well. So again, if you need to go back and look at this again, if I didn't explain anything well enough, ask in class. And we'll see you next time. Don't wait to be great. Bye-bye.